Welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection and Research Association. And this is another in our series of machine gunner mannequins, where we take a closer look at the kit that a member of a machine gun detachment would have worn, uh, and you try and go into a little bit more detail about how it was worn and, and what they did with it. So as we've said before, this isn't really about uh, the nuances and the technical detail of the equipment itself, but more the practical application of that bit of equipment for machine gunners. So we won't go into the history of the development of things too much, uh, uh, only where it's particularly relevant. That's not our expertise. We focus on the machine gun piece, uh, but we do try and uh, you know, add that extra layer of understanding through some of our own experiential work. We live in history and, and reenactment or through uh, you know, just trying this kit on, seeing how things fit. So what we're looking at today is an airborne soldier and we've got the benefit of a live mannequin again. So an airborne soldier, and we've, we, we study the photos and we've mishmashed a couple of the photos that we've seen of Operation Market Garden. So we've got machine gunners uh, looking out, and we believe it's in the triangle at the front of the Hartenstein, uh, and then we've got some machine gunners coming off the drop zone as well. And that, 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 that first piece, they're firing the Vickers, that first photo, they're firing the Vickers, and we can see a couple of uh, details of the back of, what, of the number two uh, as they're lying down. And then in the, in the other photo of the guys coming off the drop zone, it's actually a, a film clip, I think, uh, we see an Everest carrier being worn, and it's probably a number three or a number four, uh, maybe a number five, uh, carrying ammunition and um, some of the tools for, for the machine gun detachment to work with as well, the subsection. So uh, we've got the, the, the normal sort of standard uh, you know, battle dress underneath all this, battle dress trousers, hobnail boots, um, anklets, web anklets, uh, and then the airborne soldiers are wearing the camouflage smocks, a Denison smock, smock airborne troops. Uh, this is a obviously a reproduction uh, that we put through its paces, uh, and it's the first pattern of those. So it's a printed first pattern. Um, you know, it, it, it's got some nuances. Uh, this one's got uh, yeah, the woolen cuffs rather than the button cuffs, things like that. Again, there's loads of, loads of detail about Denison's on the internet if you want to find out where. This is not going to cover that. Um, but it is obviously, it does go to show what the, the airborne machine gunners were, were largely equipped as um, airborne troops and their infantry machine gun counterparts. So they were, you know, for, for their basic equipment, it was exactly the same as everybody else in the airborne divisions, first or sixth. Uh, and then you know, their machine gun piece was exactly the same as the infantry machine gunners. So between the two, you can put the two together. There's very, very few specific pieces of airborne machine gun kit. And actually from the looks of it, they weren't used during the operations of the Second World War. Uh, so we've got you know, the 1937 pattern webbing, basic pouches, um, depending on the weapon being carried, the personal weapon being carried. In this case, we've got carrying a rifle, number four Lee Enfield rifle. Uh, if we just hold that up a minute and see one, one, from, one from the collection. So a you know, standard British Army rifle, 10 round magazine, bolt action rifle, does anything, does what you need it to do. Um, so, and, and you carry the ammunition in 50 round bandoliers, which could be slung across you, or a 50 round bandolier fits in the bottom of the pouch and then cut the grenades on top. Um, grenades are really important to machine gunners because they're that local protection. Once you're in place, you, know, you can't swing the Vickers round. So lots of grenades being carried. You know, a box of number 36 grenades, the, the, the standard sort of the Mills bomb uh, being carried all the time uh, with, with machine guns detachments uh, with, with those subsections. Um, you know, stand 37 bat, you know, the kit in the pockets might be, you know, the smaller pe you know, personal kit uh, that, he, that you need, T10, um, you know, spare scrim scarf, stuff like that. Uh, but then you've got, uh, you know, the smaller things like actually just sling a combination tool in there um, for, for the Vickers load of flannel it saves you getting out the spare parts kit. We certainly, you know, under, understand that and, and that works quite well. Um, it also means that you know, perhaps the, rather than just having the one combination tool in, uh, in the spare parts kit carried by the number two, you know, they, there might be additional, uh, it, if you've um, got spare parts kits uh, that you can distribute amongst the men as well, that seems to be the way the Australians, albeit not airborne, uh, they did it, they put things in pockets a lot more uh, and distributed among, amongst the wider, the wider subsection. Uh, but the main purpose, uh, oh, sorry, and just to, to cover obviously the different style helmet. The airborne, airborne troops helmet or um, it is obviously not the Mark II Tommy helmet, it's not the Mark III uh, helmet either. You know, leather chin strap on this variety, um, you know, steel helmet, you know, doesn't have the shrapnel protection that the, uh, the standard sort of uh, bowler shape helmet does. But if we turn around a moment, you can see 
you know, the Everest carrier. And this is what we, we, we really um, wanted to, to use this video to showcase, uh, is a, a, a frame, um, let's just turn to the side, there we go. You've got this frame and le leather straps actually, you know, you know, is, is the shoulder straps. Um, and we've got some additional buckles and stuff here to, to distribute the weight as, as waist buckles if needs be. Uh, but this was a, an airborne piece of equipment. Um, it, the, the, there's mounting troops and assault equipment as well, uh, but this particular variety, because it folds here, uh, it folds there so it folds flat and goes in a drop container a little bit easier, um, that was eventually just referred to as Carrier Air Everest Airborne, but it's the Mark III uh, with these folding pieces. But you can see here we've got three ammunition liners for the Vickers, 250 rounds each, 750 rounds, uh, and the haversack for the, for the soldier. So that's his small pack uh, you know, containing you know, all of his personal equipment and, and uh, you know, wash roll, that sort of thing in there. Uh, but it does mean that he can carry uh, quite a lot of ammunition, 750 rounds there, so uh, 75... Um, 22 pounds each, 22, 44, 66 pounds, about 30 kilos worth of ammunition uh, on his back, plus his small pack, probably about 40, 45 kilos, because we've added uh, one of the digging tools there as well. Yeah, the, the, the drop zone photo uh, that, that we've seen um, shows the you know a, a pick being carried. Clearly, that doesn't come out of the plane like that. It doesn't come out of what, but you know the pick being picked up out of the out of the canister, uh, you know, drop container. Sorry and um, being added onto the, onto the Everest carrier as well as ammunition. Keeps his hands free um, you know, for, for, for moving and for fighting as, as you're moving forward. So yeah, the, the Everest carrier enables you to do that. The Everest carrier does also fit the tripod, it fits the gun. It was a very adaptable piece of equipment, um, not just for these square bulky loads like this. Uh, but if we just turn to the side again, you can see, um, we're, we're probably just below the camera, we'll, we'll take a look, but the, he's got his uh, water bottle uh, cover with the mess tins in. So let's have a let's take the camera off the stand and have a look closer. So as we said, you know, standard uh, ammunition boots there and web anklet. Standard trousers on this chap, but there was a parachutist trouser uh, available as well, which had a larger pocket. We'll do a, a, a video of what, some of those in, in the future. Um, but this is what I wanted to show you. you know, the, the photo of the uh, number two with the Vickers firing uh, shows that he's got his, his mess tins in the water bottle uh, sleeve there. And still on his other side, he does have the water bottle too. That, that just frees up that extra sort of space in the small pack um, for perhaps another water bottle, more mess tins, another 24 hour ration pack um, for the assault ration if that's what it's going in. So that he's got some, some more supplies with him. And uh, you know, it, it doesn't seem to relate to machine gunners particularly. I'm sure some other units did it. It might be a battalion wide or a company, you know, a support company wide thing, uh, but it's certainly evidenced in, in the machine gunner photos we've got. And you just take a closer look there at some of the um, arrangements of the straps. You see the folding, uh, folding piece in here uh, for the Everest carrier. Um, yeah, and it's just a really adaptable piece of equipment. But certainly saves carrying these by their handles in the hands all the time, because to carry three, uh, you'd need two hands to do that. You can only carry, you know, you can only carry for short distances, you know, two two liners, one in each, one in each hand, and that means you can't carry the rifle and you can't fight. So yeah, the purpose of this video really was to get across another piece about how the how the you know, ammunition was carried. Yeah, we've got a, a full video on that, uh, but. You know, this this in the context of the airborne troops. Uh, just worth saying, that, you know, it still allows for the entrenching tool uh, for the individual to be carried underneath there as well. So that two part, um, you know, halve and, and, and a head in the web case uh, is there. Uh, but I'm sure that could be attached to the small pack um, to get it out of the way even more. But it does sit quite comfortably. Uh, you know, either below or if this, this is all tightened up just above the web belt uh, so that the, the load is that little bit higher. So hopefully that's been of interest and you know, we'll keep on talking about how uh, you know, machine, machine gun equipment's carried. Uh, it seems to be what, you know, uh, what's of interest uh, and hopefully you know, people understand you know, the use of some of, these, some of these different pieces of equipment a little bit more. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.